The next uh, vaginal infection is also extremely common. Um, it doesn't tend to be sexually transmitted, though it can be transferred from uh, female partners to female partners um, from a sexual contact. Otherwise, risk factors for bacterial vaginosis tend to be um, often anything that sort of disrupts the healthy bacteria in the vagina. So it's considered an overgrowth of the normal bacteria. Um, and again, doesn't generally tend to be considered sexually transmitted. It presents with discharge that's a little bit thinner. Sometimes people think, oh, I'm peeing a little bit when I walk, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit thinner, it's gray or white the discharge and it tends to have an odor and the odor is quite fishy. So that is uh, significantly different from the discharge that you would notice with yeast. And this doesn't tend to be harmful for the most part and often people will wait for their period and sometimes it will get flushed out with the period and doesn't require treatment. Um, but if it is persistent or certainly if it's causing significant symptoms, it is worth treating and it is treated by a week's worth of antibiotics. Um, other things that can put you at risk for bacterial vaginosis are, if you remember from high school chemistry, um, the pH of the vagina is actually acidic. And um, if you do have sex with males, sperm is basic. So it can take the, it can raise the pH sperm if you're having unprotected sex, so sex without a condom, with a male, it can raise the pH of the vagina and make you more prone to overgrowth of, of the normal bacteria because of the basic environment. Um, and then also yeah. it can disrupt the healthy bacteria in the vagina. So um, douching is something that we advise against just because that can actually make you more prone to vaginal infections just by, by disrupting the healthy bacteria. Um, so those are the major causes of vaginal discharge. Um, just while we're talking about sexually transmitted infection, I would be devastated if I didn't mention HPV, HPV human papillomavirus. Um, in particular, human papillomavirus can cause genital warts, which are benign, and um, can also cause changes on the cervix, which is the opening to the uterus, um, that can be a precancer and if left alone for after uh, a significant length of time can actually cause cervical cancer. Strongly recommend getting the Gardasil vaccine um, that can be extremely protective against human papillomavirus and again it um, acts against the ones that can be cancer causing and some of the benign ones which can be um, which can cause genital warts. Uh, genital warts. Uh, there isn't really a test for them, but you can see them, you can feel them. They're small little growths, and again, those don't tend to be the cancer-causing ones, um, but they are uh, uh, worth treating, obviously, and, and discussing with any partner. I mentioned of herpes simplex 5. Uh, herpes is extremely common. Most people who have it don't know it. Uh, that is important in the sense that you can have transmission of herpes even when um, the person has no symptoms at all because you can actually get viral shedding without any symptoms and therefore transmit at that time. So um, that's something to consider. Also another good reason to use condoms or um, with female to female sex using some kind of barrier protection because uh, that can minimize that um, contact again, doesn't fully get rid of the risk because if you can picture the parts that barrier protection covers isn't complete, uh, but it certainly can make a big difference. Um, and herpes is something that once you have it, you tend not to be able to get rid of it and you can get recurrences, um, but you can also treat it with antiviral medication, which can shorten the course. And also some people will choose to take suppressive medication, um, which will decrease the number of outbreaks that they have and also decrease the likelihood that the herpes will transmit to their partners.